Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. It's the Happy Holidays edition of Horse Center as 2022, 2022 year is coming to an end. I don't know. That kind of boggles my mind, Brian. Yeah, we've been around for a while, Matt, but uh, first thing we want to do is wish everyone a Merry Christmas. This is our Christmas edition. The day after Christmas, Matt, as you know, there are big races all over the country. There's a Kentucky Derby points race down in New Orleans in the Big Easy, the Gun Runner, the aptly named Gun Runner Stakes, Matt. But uh, the biggest day of all, the day after Christmas, of course, is opening day at Santa Anita, the great race place, Matt, a chalk full of graded stakes on that card led by the grade one Malibu, Matt. And we're going to jump right in because this could be a race that decides a uh, pretty uh, important Eclipse Award. And that's the three-year-old champion because we have Taba in here, Matt. No three-year-old male has won three grade one races so far in 2022, but Taba could get that job done here Monday in the Malibu. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And and the field didn't come up quite as strong as uh, as anticipated, which should should certainly make things easier for Taba. Um, boy, you know, if if Baffert has him even close to the way he has been in his last two races with the third in the Breeders' Cup and the, and the win in the Pennsylvania Derby and the past win at Santa Anita and the Santa Anita Derby. If he's close to that, it's hard to imagine that he would have any difficulty in the Malibu. It's a it's a decent field. I tell you what, I you know I I, I didn't want to see one of those four or five horse uh, California fields in here in the Malibu. So we got uh, we got a reasonably good sized field, and there are some talented horses. But you're right, of course, Taba stands over this field as far as a class perspective, what he's been running in all year long. Uh, wins at Santa Anita to begin his career, an impressive maiden win right into the Santa Anita Derby in his second career start. This will be his first race at Santa Anita since that Santa Anita Derby win back in April, Matt. But he is a, a, a horse who, on class, is the class of the Malibu. Uh, let me ask you this real uh, quick, uh, you know, it, it, depending on a nose victory, a disqualification victory, or a six-length victory, do you think Taba is your champion three-year-old male if he wins this race on Monday? I don't know, Brian. Uh, uh, you know, certainly he'll, he'll have the recency factor uh, in his favor. Um, and, and as you mentioned, he would become the only three-year-old with – three grade one races um i think it will be a pretty close decision because i i'm sure there'll be plenty of voters that you know are, will want to stick with uh, uh the the performances of epicenter earlier in the year but I don't know, often the the most recent best form is a significant factor yeah, that's a good point, Matt. I think Epicenter probably had the best overall year from January through December. Of course, Epicenter was hurt, unfortunately, in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, Taba, though, I, I'm warming up to the idea, frankly, of Taba being a champion just because of how he's finishing, how he's he started off the year well. Uh, the Kentucky Derby was no good for Taba, but certainly he's proven to be a top-notch animal and one we're going to see in 20. 23. So that's a good thing. Looking at this field, Matt, let's start from the rail. Forbidden Kingdom, I was talking about there are talented horses in here. Forbidden Kingdom is certainly a talented horse. Twice a grade two winner at Santa Anita early in the year. He was actually favored over Taba and Messier in that Santa Anita Derby. He hasn't won since he entered the starting gate in the Santa Anita Derby. But on the other hand, his two return races are good, especially the last one. Yeah, and there's a few of the horses like Forbidden Kingdom that uh, were significant players earlier in the year on the Kentucky Derby Trail and, and are are coming back. And in the Malibu, kind of like in the Met Mile, we've got horses that are uh, 
a, a number of horses that are cutting back to sprinting for the first time in a long time. And then we've got a handful of, of just clearly sprinters uh, going the seven furlong distance. So uh, Forbidden Kingdom for, uh, uh, for, for Richard Mandela is projected as we've got the time form pace projector up here is projected to be on the lead of what is a is a fast pace you mentioned his most recent race which was uh was good um before that in his comeback he ran in the santa anita sprint uh which was a tough spot to make a comeback in and finished fifth so I expect him to be a factor early, but I'm not so sure about late. Yeah, it, it, looking at this pace projector from Timeform US, Matt, it, I, I agree with at least the top two horses here because the outside horse, Straight No Chaser, has only had three career races, by the way. First two on turf, but Straight No Chaser has a ton of speed. And for Forbidden Kingdom, you know, he, he's not relaxing now that he's come back as a sprinter since the layoff. He is going right to the lead. I thought he ran a good race uh, in that first race back in the stakes race, and he, he faded a little bit late. Uh, and then last time, get her number, uh, came back with a big cigar mile off that win, and Forbidden Kingdom was only beaten a half length there. So Forbidden Kingdom is dangerous speed, but I think the presence of straight no chaser makes this a more difficult task for Forbidden Kingdom. Next, Matt, on the, uh, uh, going from the rail out is Messier. And, and I think Messier, you know, we have him at eight to one, and he, he's never been eight to one in his career, the Sound Empire maker, one of several, or actually one of two. I'm, I'm already thinking about the next race we're going to do, the La Brea, but one of two from the Baffert Barn, and, and now clearly the lesser one. He was the favorite, not the favorite. He was favored over. He was the favored stable mate in that Santa Anita Derby when Taba ran right by him late. Messier was very highly regarded. Actually, he was one of the horses on that wicked pace in the Kentucky Derby for a long time before he packed his tent up as they turned for home in the mile and quarter Kentucky Derby. One race back, and it just looks awful on paper, but in that race, uh, a very a stakes quality allowance race at Keeneland during Breeders' Cup weekend, Messier bled, and, and that is good enough reason for me to draw a line through that return race. Yeah, that's for sure, but uh, but... At the same time, for me, Brian, it's a little bit of a head scratcher because uh, that race was not that long ago, and if he bled in any significant way, which, and and I have to assume that it was not that significant, um, this is a little bit of a fast return from having had a you know a, a problem with bleeding and, and coupled with the fact that again in his career he's not going to run with lasix in here so i have a lot of concerns i don't know the details i don't know if there's a story i don't know if how insignificant the bleed was but um to me it, it makes this a tough spot for messier yeah, and I'm, I'm going to go against the grain a little bit with you there because, yeah, it's seven weeks off uh, a, a bleeding incident. For, for me, the bleeding incident's probably enough of a reason to, 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 to say why he just quit as badly as he did in that race. That was clearly nothing like any of his previous races. Uh, in fact, Messier is a, a winner at seven furlongs. He's a graded stakes horse all the way. And uh, seven weeks off, obviously, it didn't uh, have any long-term effect on him. He's run well at this track, obviously, before. So I, I do think Messier is a, is a pretty big threat in here. Maybe the biggest threat to his stable mate, Taba. Number three is Apprehend. Apprehend was beaten upset at Zia Park in the Zia Park Derby last time. Uh, Apprehend had an impressive win the race before that, though. Yeah, for from the barn of Peter Miller, um, lifetime apprehend has won, but won both of his races at Santa Anita, uh, including you know uh, most recently you mentioned the Zia Park Derby. Um, he won an allowance uh, by eight lengths. Before that, it was a small field. Um, this is one for Peter Miller. Um, we've got two. I like the other one better. 
Yeah, and I, I actually like this one better. I, I, I think um, I think there was a reason that he lost that race at Zia Park. He was heavily favored over stable mate there. He ran second, and Perfect Flight went by him pretty easy. But I think Perfect Flight is 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 a, a proven horse at eight and a half furlongs, where I think the cutback in distance helps the talented apprehend. And I don't know, he's one horse that could pop up and run a good race in here. Next horse uh, could be the second favorite. His name is Nakatomi, trained by Wesley Ward, Matt. Nakatomi has been a very good sprinter throughout his career. He went over to England last year on the turf. It looks like he prefers dirt. He, he was off for quite a while, but he's come back with three nice races, including a, a good win at Keeneland. In fact, it was that race that I talked about, a stakes quality allowance race at Keeneland where Messier bled and backed out of. Nakatomi was a good looking winner. Yeah, he was one of those, you know, quintessential Wesley Wards that, you know, uh, makes their first start early on, comes out blazing, and heads over to uh, Royal Ascot for the uh, for the two year old turf sprint. Uh, and uh, yeah, he did okay. He ran eighth in uh, you know one of those big fields over at uh, it, at Ascot. Um, Got to do some things that he hasn't done. Uh, shipping west for the first time is not an easy thing, and. You know, in, in my eye, we often get the best from a lot of Wesley Ward horses earlier in your career. This one's done well lately, but, you know, um, I don't love the ship to the West. Yeah, the ship to the West is a question, as is the distance. Uh, he's never been seven furlongs yeah, before. Right. He, he is truly a square. I, I do disagree with the pace projector a little bit here. I think he would be one of the ones that would be closer Forbidden Kingdom and Straight No Chaser early. They have them pretty far back here in the pack. I, I think Nakatomi's best chance is to make a move on the turn and see how good he is getting seven furlongs on his first trip out west. Number five is Hoist the Gold. Hoist the Gold, two of 15 lifetime. Again, I'm going to disagree with the pace projector a little bit early because I think he'll be farther off the pace, definitely farther off the pace than Nakatomi, for instance, in my eyes. But he's coming off some pretty good sprints recently against good horses. In fact, if you look at his last four races, he's competitive every time, rallying every time. And he's running against good horses every time. I, I think Hoist the Gold also making his first trip out west is a horse who could be one to pick up the pieces a little bit at big odds and maybe get a share in the exotics. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, you know, typical Dallas Stewart horses that is going to be a He's going to be a big price, has run some good races, as you mentioned, Brian. Uh, it has been since February uh, that this horse found the winner's circle last time in an allowance race. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like the form recently for long shot hoist the gold. Number six, of course, is Tabo. We've talked about him a little bit already his last race he was a well-beaten third but everybody was well beaten by uh, running against flight line Taba did very well as a three-year-old in the breeders cup classic uh certainly running third in that race in that field was nothing to sneeze at before that he was a winner of the pennsylvania derby he's come back from his breeders cup classic and uh, is working well at a track we know he likes uh Taba, a deserving favor here oh yeah for sure brian you know we have him at uh uh, six to five morning line and hey you know he'll be he'll be every bit of that uh, <clears throat> hard to find a knock on Taba the, the only thing that I can pick out is that he hasn't sprinted since his debut all the way back in March yeah that, that, that that's a question for me as well in fact the one thing I, I thought of when I, I wondered whether I wanted to take a shot to beat Taba in here is is seven prolongs is can be tricky. He's coming out of a 10 furlong race. But on the other hand, looking at his form, looking at that career debut at six furlongs and how fast he ran, looking how fast he was back uh, before he ever uh, made it to the track. In fact, uh, Taba, I, I think, is the type of horse to handle that cutback. But you're right. He hasn't sprinted in a long time. So we'll see here in the seven furlong, uh, the seven furlong Malibu. Number seven, Matt, is perfect flight. We talked about uh, the stable mates that ran one, two in the Zia Park Derby. This was the winner. Yeah. And, and he, he is in fantastic form, Brian, uh, um, uh, very rarely throws in a bad race, uh, for, 
for Peter Miller, a trainer who has won his share of really big grade one sprint races. Um, find him an interesting horse. I guess I could say the same thing about him that, well, one thing that we said about Taba, we could say about him, and that is that he has not sprinted in a long time also. Yeah, Perfect Flight is uh, a, a sneaky good horse and how good he's run in, uh, recently, how good he's run in stakes races, great in stakes races, in fact, not the Zia Park Derby, but some good performances on turf. I do think, like I said, that the distance might have helped him more than his stable mate down there. So it'll be interesting to see as he cuts back to seven furlongs. But obviously, a nice horse here for Peter Miller. As is the number eight Strava match. Strava has run some races uh, here in Kentucky, Keeneland, and, and more recently a couple of Churchill Downs that looked really, really good. I just wonder, though, when he runs against good horses, he never seems to look that good. So an interesting shipper in Strava. Yeah, another one coming from uh, for for Dallas Stewart, and this one may be longer priced than the than the one we mentioned earlier, Hoist the Gold. Um, yeah, his last uh, his last victory to note was a big win, but it was on a sloppy track. Yeah, yeah, but he is he has proven capable of looking really good when he gets the, the right type of field, and I, I definitely think he'll be that more of the two. Dallas Stewart horses uh, in here, but uh, and he's getting Flavian Pratt to 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 ride him out there. But uh, I'm just not convinced, seeing his form against good horses, that he can come out here and run a big race. And number nine, we already talked about, lightly raced, very speedy, obviously talented, straight no chaser. Yeah, lightly raced, Brian. Only three starts uh, at this point for uh, trainer Dan Blacker. Uh, his first two were uh, on the turf. And then he had that really nice allowance win at Santa Anita, which I guess gave Blacker the idea to take a shot in this race. Yeah, I think he's a talented sprinter. I think he's a very fast horse, but so is Forbidden Kingdom on the rail, and he's on the outside. So we should have two worlds colliding from the inside and outside early in the Malibu, and, and probably that won't set up great for either one of them. However, if for some reason either one of them doesn't go out there early, that could make the other one more dangerous. We shall see. All right, that's the Malibu. Like I said, a bunch of big races at Santa Anita, but we're going to stick with the grade one, seven furlong races, Matt. So we're going to turn it to the Phillies here, and we're going to look at the La Brea, seven furlongs as well, grade one. It's a little bit earlier on the card out there, and a special early card on Monday at Santa Anita. And I think this is an interesting betting race. You know, you look at it at first glance and you say, well, Baffert's got half the horses, literally, trains four of the eight. But uh, I'm not ready to call this a just a Baffert race, are you? Uh, no, there's some interesting horses. We've got some uh, 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 speedy horses shipping in from the east. And uh, so, uh, I mean, hey, just uh, just last weekend, Baffert had uh, three out of five in the Los Al Futurity, and he didn't win that race. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a, a horse who had never finished first won that uh, Los Al Futurity uh, nicely. It's not a practical joke. So uh, Baffert is is not immune to the upset, and I, I think it could happen here. But uh, certainly, he's got four horses that can win. Having said that, and we'll start at the rail. That's under the stars. One of the four Baffert horses. Uh, she's done some good things in her career. Uh, she's certainly a threat in here. Uh, she's not maybe the, the most consistent. In fact, of the four Bobbery horses, three of them have only one career loss. This is the most experienced one. And on her day, she is a serious threat in here. Yeah, Brian, I agree. Under the stars, number one. Number two, Matt, is Hot Peppers. Rudy Rodriguez sends a speedy filly from the east out west to see what she can do on the front end here in the La Brea. Yeah, that's a rare thing to say that uh, Rudy is shipping a horse uh, out west. And I, I can't think of a time when uh, when he did that. But yeah, she uh, uh, looks like from the pace projector and on paper, there's a chance, I guess, that she could get loose on the lead. She is fast. We've seen that speed uh, 
in big races in New York uh, throughout the year. Um, she was fourth in the prior, second in the prestigious test at Saratoga, and had a couple of nice wins at uh, Belmont in the spring to early summer meeting. She's got a lot of speed, Brian, and with all those Bafferts in there, she's probably going to have some good some good odds. Yeah, she should have some nice odds, Matt. Uh, she is the fastest of the fast. I'm going to agree with this time form U.S. pace projector for the La Brea. It is saying fast pace, so she'll have to work a little bit. And certainly all four Bafferts aren't going to, and possibly uh, ain't easy as well, aren't going to let her have an easy time of it on the lead. But she clearly looks like the, the, the speed of the race in here. And uh, folks, a little handicapping thing that I've had some success with over the years, you, you, you often wonder about a horse who's been away for a little bit of a layoff like Hot Peppers has. I guess she's working on uh, three and a half months or so since her last race. Uh, fresh horses, I like them when they have speed because I, I, I think that is when they're at their best, when they're raring to go and fresh speed horses can often run their biggest shot right out of the uh, right out of the barn first time in a while so keep an eye on hot peppers here in the la brea but it's no easy task another baffert just outside i'm ganadora matt ganadora another one another nice uh philly sired by quality road and she's one of the three bafferts that i mentioned who've only had one career loss yeah three wins from four starts for uh ganadora uh, um Won a stake at Los Al by eight lengths. Uh, got some quality here. When I looked at the four uh, Bafferts in there, I pop, thought popped in my mind, like maybe this is the one that's in there as a rabbit for the others. It, it, it's possible. Um, I, I wonder too. She is also fresh because she hasn't run since about the same time as Hot Peppers. Um, I don't think she has on paper has the speed of Hot Peppers, but yeah, they send her. She certainly has the talent to go out there. She won that last race big at Los Al uh, back in September. But on the other hand, I wonder, only four career races, why are her races so spread out? It, it's a question of uh, if, if she's a completely healthy filly. But sometimes talented horses like that are dangerous in here, and she is dangerous in the La Brea. Pretty confident the four, the third Baffert horse, Midnight Memories, will be the favorite on Monday, even though there are some very interesting Bafferts in the field, because Midnight Memories certainly is the most accomplished of the Baffert group. Um, she, too, has only lost one race, four out of five lifetime, with only a third a blemish on her resume so far. Yep, absolutely, Brian. She will cut back in distance. She's won her last two races. Uh, nice graded stakes victories in the Zenyatta and the Tory Pines. And, and I agree. I think she will be the top choice amongst the Bafferts. Top choice and likely one to beat. But you see the pace projector again here has her in the middle of the field. I do worry possibly that she'll fall a little farther back than even we're seeing here. And that could make it a little tougher for her. But we'll see. She's good tactical speed. She can pass horses. She's proven to be classy. Uh, but she's won her, her last few going two turns. So this will be a test as she drops back in distance. Number five, Matt, is Ain't Easy. Ain't Easy back, uh, I guess it's a little over a year ago. It seems longer. was a grade one winner. She just hasn't done a lot since that grade one win last October in California. Yeah, for uh, trainer Phil D'Amato, uh, she was recently third in a turf sprint. So, yeah, this is... Uh, and before that, uh, really showed very, very little in a couple of grade threes on the dirt. Yeah, her, her return race on the turf wasn't bad. Uh, she's got speed and, and she has some talent. So uh, it's, it's possible she pops up again and runs a good race, but certainly a long shot on the PPs. Here we go with another Baffert, Matt. Fun to dream. One of the more interesting fillies in in the race. She's a state bred. She's a California bred, but she's a daughter of Arrogate who's looked really, really good. In fact, only one horse has beaten her in her five race career. And, and she's coming off a nice win where she 
laid it down late to get up in a state bred stakes at seven furlong. She's been running more recently. She's got really good form coming in. Seven furlongs looks like her distance. She'll be coming from off the pace a little bit. There's a lot to like with this cow bred filly. There is a lot to like, uh, you know, uh, with a post a little bit towards the outside that seems ideal. She has an allowance win at Santa Anita. Seems like uh, she's getting the right kind of pace set up in th this running of the La Brea. Yeah, agreed. Kirst Kirsten Bosch is, has some talent for trainer John Sadler, but much like Ain't Easy, I, I, I'm just not on either one of these big long shots in the race. She looks like she's not quite as good. Yeah, um, she went out to Zia Park and was second in the Oaks out there. Uh, ran in the turf allowance that was, you know, not especially uh, a great performance. Um, way back in May, she was second in a stake at Santa Anita, but I don't know. She did, just doesn't seem to be in her best form right now. Yeah, and number eight, Awake at Midnight, another interesting horse. I, I think there's two candidates to upset the Baffert domination here in the La Brea. Again, 50% of the field is Baffert, and they all have a shot. But mentioned Hot Peppers quite a bit, and then you got Awake at Midnight. And if you look at Awake at Midnight, she is the only horse to ever beat Fun to Dream. Maybe Fun to Dream is developed uh, in the meantime. But uh, much like Taba coming out of the Breeders' Cup going longer, but unlike Taba, she really had a tough day and, and did nothing in the Breeders' Cup this day. Yeah, I, I, I obviously, as it turned out, that was not the right spot for uh, uh, for that Doug O'Neill uh, filly in the Breeders' Cup this staff. But if, you, if you're willing to draw a line through that, you, you don't have to go back far to see a really good second place uh, in the Zenyatta Stakes and a nice allowance win sprinting at Del Mar. So, um, but again, this is a really nice field. It's a really nice field. But on the other hand, Awake at Midnight, if you look at her one-turn races, uh, they are very good, very good, good enough, to, in fact, to say that she would be one of the horses to beat in this race, in my eyes. So back at seven furlongs, that could be the, uh, the tonic she deserves, uh, she needs to get, uh, to get good and, and to run a big race again. Yeah, the Breeders' Cup this stuff, she had trouble against too good a field and, and 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 that was it so i'm going to draw a line through that and i think she has at least a little bit of a shot in here in that all right we talked malibu we talked la brea two big grade ones to close out the year opening day at san anita now we get to top picks i'm going to let you go first and why don't we go in order with the malibu first matt absolutely brian um i've got a, a perfect flight as my top pick, and let's make the, make it clear here, folks. Um, as we said in the rundown, you know, I, I, this is this is Taba's race to win, and, and I I expect Taba to win. Uh, and it was hard to find any uh, uh, chinks in the in the past performance of Taba, but the short odds they're going to be really short. I think Perfect Flight is in. Excellent form, Peter Miller. Um, do I expect this horse to win? Probably not, but I wouldn't be surprised if Perfect Flight can get a piece of the exacta or trifecta at good odds. All right, a long shot for Matt there. I, I always try to look to beat the, the, the heavy favorite, but this is a field I just have no confidence that they will beat him. I think Taba wins this race. I think Taba looks good doing it and i think Taba very well could win an eclipse award by his performance on it. he's my top pick i actually think his stable mate messier is the horse most likely to be second i of the long shots though i think uh, uh one of the dallas stewart horses uh, uh could rally up there uh, into the exotics and, and bring some prices into the malibu uh la, la brea matt uh, while i was on baffer in the malibu and you not you the la brea were switching sides here you are one on one of the four Bafferts in the La Brea. I am. I am going with uh, Fun to Dream. Um, she is in really good form, which I guess we could say about uh, about the other 
Baffert's in this Philly race, but I, I think uh, she's going to run a stalking trip and get an excellent setup. I, I, I'm not sure if uh, if Hot Pepper's traveling out west is going to be able to uh, be uh, you know full of run at the end of the seven furlongs. So I'm going with uh, fun to dream to rally up and get the win. Yeah, well, I'm looking for some odds, much like you did in the Malibu. I think Hot Peppers will be ignored coming off a fourth place finish uh, three and a half months ago. Uh, fun to dream is is probably the backer that I, I'm most scared of, actually. And she's second choice on our line, but she could be the third or fourth choice, too. So fun to dream, an interesting pick for you. I'm going to roll the dice and, and say a fresh Hot Peppers gets that lead early and is really, really tough to bring down from there. Um, whether she wins or or maybe holds on for a second, I will uh, I will have hot peppers as my bet in the La Brea, an interesting betting race, and I'm hoping who knows hot peppers even drifts up to double digits in the La Brea. All right, Matt, that's another show, the Christmas edition of Horse Center. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Can I get a parting shot from you, my good friend there in New Jersey? Absolutely, Brian. I want to wish all of our loyal Horse Center fans, and we have many of you that have watched Brian and I throughout the years, and we really appreciate it. Wishing you happy holidays and a healthy 2023. There you go. Uh, Merry Christmas, folks. Have a, have a wonderful holiday. Uh, we, we should have led with you all here at the top of this uh, thanks, but we wanted to give thanks to our good friend Candace Curtis for the Race Graphics Derby Wars, the sponsor and time Form US for those excellent pace projector graphics that they provide us. Uh, but uh, folks, it's uh, we can't do the show without you. So thank you. Go ahead and hit, hit subscribe uh, on our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. We sure do appreciate you watching every week. We'll have one more show before the end of the year. I guess we'll call that a special New Year's show, Matt. But uh, for now, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Merry Christmas. <laughs>